Today is Friday and we're harvesting for our 21st farmer's market. Woo! <laughs> so far we've got uh, rainbow chard, cilantro, lettuce, dill. What else is over there? Some mustard greens and some stellaria. Stellaria is back in season. It's a spring crop and a fall crop. It's great. Got all these big fluffy leaves. They're gonna flop. Well, first of all, if they're bad, let's take them off, but then. Yeah, if they look good and they're flopping, it's better to get them off now. Just do the heavy trim and you're done. And basically just however you can pack them. They're really heavy. This is next year's praying mantis egg sack right here. Uh, I have some sad news for you. This is my last week on Henry's farm. It's the fall time. The seasons are coming towards to an end. The good news is I'm going to be continuing the vlogs. So you can follow me on my journey when I start my own farm. Henry has been an incredible mentor and the knowledge that one can gain from working here is super awesome and it really um, prepares the next generation for, for farm life and, and how it should operate and how you will be uh, very successful. I think mentorships are awesome and the way, the way they shape you. I have interviewed Evan, who was a, an apprentice on Henry's farm. Uh, I also interviewed Henry on mentorships, and I'm gonna be interviewing the farmer that Henry apprenticed at in New York City. That's gonna be on next, next week's episode. Stay tuned for that. Alright, this is the last time I'm going to be using this baby for this year. Um, this is the last planting that we've done. This is the overwintering spinach. We're looking for the spinach to be um, about the size of a fist, maybe like four inches tall. We have two separate plantings here and they're planted within two weeks of each other. This is October, it's 81, it's hot, it's beautiful outside but it's also allowing the plants to grow a lot more. So this time of year, uh, the season for us is just about over. So whatever's in the ground is in the ground and whatever you didn't get planted you should save for next year. Um, unless you're doing some overwintering farming which is totally cool and it is possible but Henry does not do that here. Uh, we like to take our winter breaks and relax and decompress after getting our butts kicked uh, for nine months. So all we're basically doing between now and uh, December 1st which is kind of like the last day that we work out here uh, is basically breaking stuff down, cleaning up, and preparing for the next year. So we've got a lot of plots out here um, tilled up ready to go and a lot of them are cut planted with cover crops and the reason is because this is a hay ground here what you could do is just till it up and plant your seeds directly in there and that's totally cool because this is a great cover ground ground but uh, what's happening here is that since the hay, this is a hay ground for two years the hay grows up um, and so it dies back and then it creates a mat and it's a very thick mat of mulch and the grass kind of grows through there so that what you have is the mat, the grass, 
and then in the winter time this was going to die and lay down and then you have a really thick mat of of organic matter which is great for the soil but um, it stays wet in the springtime so planting seeds is very difficult because you have to figure out a way to get that to dry out so you can till it up and then plant your seeds into that in the springtime um, and in the spring it's very difficult because it's very wet it rains a lot in the spring and so what we've done here is we've tilled up a lot of this area and then we've replanted cover crops in there so now we're breaking that mat down into the soil and then we're planting a cover crop in there so that we'll, we'll still have the soil covered uh, for the winter time and we're adding uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere back into the soil and so now that area is going to dry out a lot quicker for springtime so some of the beds are bare for the very first plantings of the year and then some of the other ones are planted in cover crops which will then grow and we can till that in and then the other sections still have that mat and those will be the last plants that the last area that we till up so that might be around um, May or June we'll probably till up those areas and then that could become a new section for planting for like summer crops. So I'm going to get back here finish pushing this uh, spinach and then I'm going to polish off my tool scrape off all the dirt and polish off and the reason that you scrape off the dirt is because dirt um, it has moisture in it and it allows the metal to rust so if you leave your tools a little bit muddy and you put them in the barn over winter they will uh, rust over and you're actually losing the longevity of that metal itself so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this spinach and uh, yeah we'll do a little flyby and we'll check out this property down here so all of the interns for next year can now see the field that they're gonna be working on Today I'm preparing this, uh, this section over here for the full planting of garlic, which usually happens end of October, early November. And then tomorrow, Henry's going to come out here with the bed shaper and he's going to shape the beds. One technique for using the tiller on the tractor is that the tiller is pushed all the way to the right hand side. And so you're asking me tilling um, in a counterclockwise circle so that you don't leave any tire tracks anywhere. So Henry's out there right now, he's got the bed shaper on the tractor and he's creating the beds. The dirt that's below the tires gets removed and gets placed back on top of the bed to create a deeper bed. It allows for us to have a, uh, a walking path and if we get a heavy rain, downpours, the water can then sit in there as opposed to then um, uh, totally like flooding out all of your beds. You actually have a place for the water to go to and drain out. 